it's been a while, but today we're back with another beginner's guide for Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3. The next four guides that we'll be doing will be covering the X-Men characters that released. Now, I actually put up a poll in regards to the order I would cover these characters, and the one that got the most votes coming in at a whopping 42% was a character you see on screen at the moment, the incredible Phoenix or Jean Grey. Now, in the video, to give you an idea of how she plays, and I will say that she plays incredibly well, I'll cover various different sections. So we'll start off with the overview and we'll look at our stats. We'll do a deep dive into the abilities. We'll then talk about the team bonuses and how you can get the most out of them. We'll look at the synergy attacks that are available. We'll talk about the build option I'm currently using on her and the uh, ISO 8 I use as well. And then we'll have a look at her alternative costume and then finish up with a quick summary. So let's jump in and we'll start off with the overview. Phoenix then plays really as you would expect. She's able to do a huge amount of fire damage all over the screen and just decimate the enemies. Now, when we look at her abilities, she's got a single tag across all of them, so that makes it really nice when it comes to itemization, and we'll cover that when we get to the, the build section. Ability-wise, she's got three abilities that are all about damage, and she's got one utility one, that's Cleansing Flames, which we'll talk about more in the abilities section, but this is probably one of the best abilities in the game. It's a complete game changer for so many different teams. Now when we look at her hero traits, she does really well as well. So she's got flight, it's great for getting through levels, but with the new danger room stages where it's a rush to the end of the stage, this is especially nice. She has fire resistance, which again is especially nice in danger room because it means you can pick up the phoenix buff, which gives you additional damage, but you won't be taking any damage as a result of it. And then she's got the element fire as well. It's the weakest out of the three, but it's the one that thematically makes sense with her. When we look at her stats, they're quite funny in that they're either exceptionally high or exceptionally low. So her strength is an F, but that's not relevant to her kit at all. Vitality is an F. Mastery is an A, so that is relevant to the energy tag, which is on all her abilities, so it's really nice that that's high. Resilience is an F, durability is an F, and then energy is an A as well. But when we look at the cleansing flames skill, you're not going to have problems with energy at all. And the team you run with aren't going to have problems with energy either. It really is a game changer, this skill. So let's jump in now and actually have a more in-depth look at the abilities. So the first ability we start off with here is actually the first one you unlock. This is called Phoenix Fury. So this is your standard dash skill. You'll dash forward, huge ball of flame. Looks pretty incredible. The stagger rating is up at 8. So you use this when you're up against elites or bosses. And it can actually take out trash as well. You can hold it down. The longer you hold it, the more damage you do and the further you actually go. You'll notice that as she dashes forward, she leaves a big line of flame. Now that, unfortunately, is just a, a visual effect. It's not mechanical in that it won't actually burn enemies that walk through it or anything like that. But despite that, this is a, an amazing skill and it does a huge amount of damage. The next ability we have here is Cosmic Might. Now this is probably the ability that I use least, although depending on your team setup you may want to drop it into your rotation. So it's your standard AoE trash clearer for taking them out when you are surrounded. The reason you would really use this, if you're running a, a team of characters such as like, let's say Wolverine or Black Panther, and they've got the elemental trait and you can add fire to them, then you'll notice with this that one of the options it is, is adds fire element to ally attacks. So generally if I need to take out trash, I'd probably just rather use Phoenix Fury, because it zip across the screen and it seems to be a bit faster, whereas this you need to stay still and you can be a bit of a, a sitting duck while you're doing so. But if you're running a team that can take advantage of the elemental trait, then do fire this off every so often to get fire onto your allies' weapons. The next ability we have here is Telekinetic Talon. Now this particular one uh, does have a mechanic in that when you're fighting a lower level trash, if you don't defeat them with the skill, which 9 times out of 10 you actually will, then you lift them up and you do additional damage, but you'll very seldom see it happen because this skill in the first instance does a huge amount of damage. With some fire isos, I've been able to hit around about 50k and that's not even optimised fire isos, higher ones that I've upgraded yet. So this one anyway, this will be your main damage dealer. You'll use Phoenix Fury to stagger a boss on an elite and then you follow up just by spamming this and it can be really nice for taking out regular mobs as well. But on your, your higher level enemies, once they're staggered, you will do a lot of damage with this. 
The final ability in the real game changer for Jean then is Cleanse and Flame. So with this you throw down a large dot, the damage is based on fire even though the tag's not actually there under Synergy Trait or in the tool tip. And with this it will regenerate energy for the damage you do. So you want to have this up all the time. If you try and place down a second one, it will just replace the first one. So just put the first one up and then just wait till it runs out and then place it back down again. What you can do as well, if you don't necessarily want to really play as Jean, is have her in your team and switch to her to drop this down and then switch back to the character of your choice, someone like Black Panther, and then you can go back to Whale and his Vibranium Slash. So ability wise there anyway, you've got your Phoenix Fury for breaking the Stagger Gauge, Cosmic Might for your Trash, Telekinetic Talon for doing the bulk of your damage, and then Cleansing Flames for utility as well. Now, just to finish up with abilities, you've got her Extreme Attack, which does have a damage portion, but it will actually resurrect your allies that are downed as well. And if you cast it just as you're downed, then it will actually resurrect Phoenix. So really pretty amazing Extreme Attack there. Next up anyway, let's have a look at the team bonuses. When it comes to team bonuses then, these are something you can get some extra damage, some extra health and so on from, but I wouldn't say they're mandatory at the end of the day, run the team that you want to run, but Phoenix is actually part of six different teams, so it's X-Men, Femme Fatales, Women of Marvel, Family Values, Forces of Nature and also First Class X-Men. Now when there's any overlap in any of the teams, which means you're gaining more stats from them, I'll put a little number in brackets next to that particular character now for this new set of beginner guides I've added a new section at the bottom to hopefully just give you a real quick snapshot of who's the best characters to go for so you can see at the bottom here the top team bonus and they overlap into three different teams it would include Magneto, Storm, Cyclops, Iceman, Gamora and Psylocke as well there. So that's the team bonuses let's have a look at the synergy attacks. Synergy attack wise then you have three different traits on Jean because the final ability, the one that generates energy, doesn't have a synergy trait at all. So you've got charge, burn and bash, they can all create decent synergy traits but nothing as powerful as the likes of Ricochet. Now you'll notice my top five and bottom five characters that she synergizes well with is blank. Now the reason for that is that there's actually a spreadsheet that's updated on Reddit and the user that updated this hasn't updated it yet. And I was stuck in a position where do I delay these beginner's guides until that's actually available and I don't know when it will be available at all or do I go ahead and I've decided to go ahead and what I'm going to do in future is once that spreadsheet's actually updated I'll add the top five and the bottom five characters that she synergizes with to uh, pin the post at the top of this particular video so you can check back and actually check that out there. Now I will say offhand though if you're looking to do synergy attacks there's certain characters that normally always appear at the top or the bottom, so ones you genuinely always want to avoid would be the likes of Thanos and Scarlet Witch, they don't have many synergy attack options at all, and in regards to the top characters, names I see come up very often would be Star-Lord and Crystal, but again, as mentioned, as soon as this spreadsheet's updated and I get this information, then I'll look to add it as a pinned post. But that's all the synergy attacks, let's now have a look at the build option that's available. Build wise then for Gina, player as a, a damage dealer but also support as well with the energy generating skills she has. Now when we look at the tags on her abilities you can see that three of them have fire, the fourth one doesn't. However in typical team ninja fashion the fourth skill actually still benefits from the, the fire isos even though it doesn't say so in the tool tip. So for that reason when it comes to building her you want to go for increased damage of fire attacks by 24.9%. Increased crit chance of fire attacks by 13.1. Now, because her status effect isn't crowd control, meaning you get automatic crits when it works, it actually means as a result of that, she greatly benefits from the crit eye. So, so definitely put that on her. With all the dots you get from the fire, you really ramp the damage up. 
The final two ISOs I would recommend using on her are both accessible for season rewards for the danger room, so get in there and get them farmed. But the first one really helps her survivability, it's recover 3% of fire ability attribute damages hit points. And then the next one is add a 11.6% chance that damage taken will be inflicted to your energy instead of your hit points. And because you're constantly regenerating energy, you're never really going to run out there. So that's the build option. Let's have a look at her alternative costume. This looks really nice. The alternative costume we have at the moment then is just a uh, simple recolouring but this actually works because it would change it into the Dark Phoenix with this change in the colour of it. In the future I would like to maybe see the 90s X-Men look for her or the new X-Men look that's one with the black trench coat. That looks pretty awesome as well but as we mentioned a moment ago to unlock this it's the level 180 gauntlet and if you're struggling with that I've actually got a video up on the channel as well so just check a few videos back for that. But let's just finish up now for a quick summary. Out of the four characters we've got in with the X-Men DLC pack, Jean is by far the strongest. She's possibly one of the strongest characters in the game. She can put out a huge amount of damage. She can add fire to characters of the elemental trait. She's got flight. She's got the resurrection on her extreme ability. She's got that energy gain ability. That's probably the real game changer though. She's very strong without it, but with that, she's just taken up to God tier really. You can run a team, let's say your Miss Marvel spin to win for example, and if you drop down this energy field first, you can just keep spinning away and you'll very seldom run out of energy. So it's great for farming and it's great for taking out characters as well. So without a doubt they have done Jean Grey justice and it's great to see that happen. So let me know in the comments below anyway if you have her unlocked. If you feel she is definitely up there at the top of the game as I believe and always thanks for tuning in. The next beginner's guide will be, let's see, it's going to actually be Gambit. He's actually really good as well so that should be up in the next few days. But as always again, thanks for tuning in. Take the time to hit the like button, share button and I'll see you all again soon.